I'm on. Sorry, I'm still messing with my stupid computer, stupid thing, because it's stupid. I thought I'd be up and running much quicker than this. But no. Okay. Okay. Guess I'm not going to get any cooperation out of that. So, um, so here we are. Hi, here we are. And uh, once again, once again, we have Ned the Barbarian just doing something in an otherwise not very interesting uh, environment. And hi, Stellar. And um, so what we've got to do is find a way to turn this into fantasy art. I mean, he's got a costume. And uh, like I said before, initially it was just kind of like, uh, let's just take this life drawing and put a costume on the guy. Okay, I did it. <laughs> cool. And I was happy with it for that. Uh, but now I'm, I'm looking at some of this. A lot of this stuff has no potential for anything at all. Okay, I've got stacks and stacks of drawings that I've just kind of went, yeah, okay, that was fun. And, um, you know, I just, I've separated uh, uh, the piles into things I think I really could make something out of and things that I definitely couldn't. And for all the ones that I think I really could, um, I'm going to find out that some of them probably Nah, not really. Um, so we'll find out. We'll find out. And uh, but right now, um, we've got Ned here, and he is raising his sword to the sky. It's not abundantly clear why he's doing that, um, but it is a a great fantasy image. It's something you see on a lot of book covers, and it evokes something. Dude's usually facing this other way, um, you know, but, uh, you know, he's taking a heroic stance, a victorious thing, you know. I have conquered uh, this piece of ground that I'm standing on. And so, so we're still going with that. We're still going with something like that sort of thing or he's defiant or he's calling people from you know hey over here or uh, something like that and i don't know um somehow the idea that the ground is just you know that he's standing on flat ground and there's just some horizon over there is not real compelling a, a hill a hill would be more compelling the idea that he's standing up on top of a rock or a, a summit, a mountainous summit, and uh, I don't know. There's a landscape down there. There's there's something. Um, there could be kind of like the idea of a a planet or a moon and you know like it's a little it's a little cliche but to have his his sword kind of framed hailing a cab pose uh i, I don't know if you wave a scimitar at people on, out on the street i think you you might not get your ride um <laughs> that's right. uh yeah but uh he is doing that he he was doing that pose and it is the same model um i drew another i drew him another time just doing that he hand up like this and uh somebody um said he he looks like he's hailing a cab in the uh now i've forgotten um 
uh, it's a gay district in in uh, some city, San Diego, I think, um, and uh, San, San Francisco. Uh, and uh, anyway, so I I'm, I'm just mangling the story because I can't remember the damn word. But anyway, I I rolled with that and I drew a a, a flying taxi cab up in the air, uh, and um, so. That's a thing, but I don't want to do it again. So, uh, so this is the 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 model would do the same pose sometimes. You, you know, he it wasn't he wasn't uh, obnoxious about it, but if you drew him a lot, you started to recognize uh, some poses. He do the uh, he do the classic art uh, poses like the dying Gaul and uh, uh, Michelangelo's David and uh, uh some things like that 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 you would go oh i've seen seen this painting or i've seen this statue or something which was interesting if you were sitting on the other side of the room so that it's like oh i've seen this painting but not from this side um so that was it was kind of cool and it gave him a lot of material to use um and maybe this was one of them. Maybe this is a famous painting pose for all I know. Uh, but uh, I like the idea of the the moon or the other planet or whatever it is up here in the sky. So we'll keep that. Um, and uh on my computer here i have pictures of of uh, a girl um crouched down on the ground now i don't i know it's a tired out trope you know the guy standing there with the sword and the girl's crouched down on the ground i don't know if it's even obvious he's got a sword up here i drew the sword handle rather an elaborate little uh uh, a uh, rapier type of handle, um, but it's it's going off the page. If I were to do a uh, a painting, I would probably be uh, using this, you know, using a larger canvas, and so the sketch would be only part of what I was doing. Um, so um, I wanted to draw a girl over here. Now I don't have my goddamn source material because my computer won't work for me. So um, I'm going to do something. And hang on just a second. Years ago, before... Al Gore invented the internet. Um, I used to spend a ton of money on books with reference photos because um, I thought it would help me out in situations like this. And uh, for the most part, never used any of them for anything. They're just books that I have. And Part of me wants to get rid of them. You know, we're talking low resolution photographs, um, little tiny photographs. And uh, part of me wants to just, you know, throw it away or take it to the bookstore, get rid of it. And then part of me says, no, I'm going to use this book for something. I'm going to, you know, it's like I'm going to get my I'm going to get my dollar back on this book uh, for something. Then I'll take it to the bookstore. And that's kind of stupid, but that's how I'm feeling. I'm feeling stupid. So I'm looking at this, and uh, might use that one right there. Um, I know it's a tired-out trope and all that kind of stuff. You know, the guys will stand in there holding up a sword, and the girls kneeling on the ground. Except I didn't start with that in mind. Um I started with a picture of a guy, and uh, now that he's there, 
the space left is, you know, there isn't really space for another sword willing person to be standing there necessarily. But I will see what I can do. I've got this other book a little bit more active. A little bit. Um, let's see if there's something. There's got to be something. I did not mean for you all to sit here and watch me thumb through a book that I can't even show you because it's got naked pictures in it. Um, but here we go. I'm going to just... Uh, that's so frustrating. Okay. So I'm just going to use this picture right here. And, um, and I'm going to mostly make things up because it's not really that good. Um, okay. So Well, there's this girl. She's kind of leaning on this other girl. Um, that's the big deal about this one book, is that there's two people in it. So she's kind of leaning on her. So I'll draw this and I'll get yelled at for the helpless female uh, fantasy art trope. And such is life. Given that all this stuff started in life drawing class, um, my my male models had a tendency to be uh, more active, more dynamic in their poses, and uh, female models. I mean, for the long poses, the guys are going to go sit down, do something not terribly challenging, but for the short poses, the three minute, five minute poses, um, you know, sometimes they do stuff that was just really hard. And, and I just thought, oh my God, even for three minutes, I'm not sure you can do that, but he would do it. And uh, very rarely, uh, one of the female models would would do something quite challenging. But mostly they just kind of stand there and look pretty. And I never really minded until I started doing projects like this. And it's just like, hi, I've got nothing but action poses of men and passive pretty poses of girls <laughs> and uh so i'm gonna have to uh you know if, if the world ever comes back to life uh, which it probably won't but if the world ever comes back to life I, i'm gonna have to hire my own models to because i want to be more egalitarian i want to draw female warriors doing things and I saw that I've got some comments. So I'm going to get over there and scroll this down and look at the comments. Hailing a cab, holding up a lantern. It's a cool idea. Kneeling and aiming a crossbow. Yeah. If I had a picture that looked like that. Um, but I haven't got much that looks like that. Everything I was just complaining about um, with my life drawing models is largely true in the books that you can find too. And it's largely true in the websites that you can find. Um, lots of pretty sexy poses uh, for the girls and very athletic poses for the guys. 
unless you're looking at Playgirl magazine, then you've got pretty sexy poses for the boys too. So it's a problem. It's hopefully just a problem for now and someday we'll work around it. Certainly these are not the last pictures I'll ever draw in my life. Well, I mean, it might be, like, you know, airplane could fall out of the sky and drop on top of the house, I suppose. That would make a startling end to one of my videos. But someday, if everything ever gets back to normal, um, I'm going to budget more of my money to hiring people to do the kind of things I'm trying to do. I think I mentioned one time before that uh, back in the day when I had, when I was buying these and I was going to conventions and I talked to an art director and, uh, you know, they might be giving a panel on things to do and things not to do or things to be aware of if you're trying to be an illustrator and submitting uh, material and and they're like, yeah, we understand the need to use uh, reference materials and everything. But she says, you need to know that I know every single photograph in every one of those books. And, and I've seen all of them done dozens of times. And, um, you know, um, so don't try to present that as if... Um, you made it up or, um, you know, or as if, uh, you know, you, you hired the model or something like that. It's just, it's just like, I know these things, <laughs> you know, I'm familiar with them. Sissies, uh, apologies for, for your tardiness. Don't let it happen again. Um, thank you. You'll have the pick. Thank you. Um, yeah. So we're putting, we're putting two people, two people for the price of one two sets of buns and now this puts me in a moral quandary having gone to all the trouble to cover ned's butt i suppose i have to cover hers too um but yeah yeah so i don't know what the story is i never know what the story is This morning, I uh, uh, let me see. Sharon says, "Is the scale right?" She seems seven eighths the size of the guy, but if he's really big, dude, I suppose it's possible. Uh, and Sissy says you shouldn't cover either butts. I assume. Um, yeah, she is. Uh, she's a lot smaller than him. I could fix that by erasing the whole thing and doing it over, and I don't feel like it. Um, so I could put a big pair of pointy ears off the side there and say, eh, she's not even human, so she doesn't have to be in the right scale. But uh, you are correct. She's she's uh, a good deal shorter than him.
posted the picture this morning of uh, Ned looking at a UFO with some fairies, and um, and I posted that on some other groups. Uh, I actually had to go in, uh, just open the picture with uh, with Microsoft Paint and scribble some suggestion of clothing over the fairies because there's a lot of my groups most of my groups i could not pin i could not post that uh, that would be too explicit um but that wasn't what i meant to talk about what was i what was i going to talk about oh i don't remember Oh, somebody, somebody said they, they thought the art was okay, but they, they hate Ned's name. Can't stand Ned the Barbarian. And, uh, I've gotten that a couple of times and I've explained the origins of his name, but it's like, I'm not going to tell that whole story every single time the subject comes up. I don't know why anybody's got a problem with it. They're okay with Ned Stark. Robert E. Howard did Conan, which is actually an, uh, a real Celtic name um, from mythology. Um, but, uh, in, and, uh, and talk show hosts. Um, but uh, other Pulp Fiction writers wrote Kothar the Barbarian. Uh, Kyrick the Barbarian, um, oh boy, I'm forgetting some. It was Thundar, and there was, uh, oh gosh, things like that. I kind of didn't want to go with one of those. Tell them it's short for Ned Rolf or something. Uh, yeah, it, it would it would work. Um, and Sissy says I'm still cracking up over the Go Ned story. Good. Uh, yeah. Uh, was their name Ned? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Your groups are way too sensitive. Well, it, they are about about some of those things um but they're big groups you know my home uh my personal uh facebook page um i've got like a thousand facebook friends but they're most of them don't really know me and and i doubt if uh you know i doubt if 10 percent of them ever see my stuff at all you know probably doesn't go across their news feed for any reason um so that's a pretty small number of people who's ever going to look at this stuff and get their trigger tripped you know no matter what you get on some general science fiction fantasy website and you've got fifty thousand people 
that check in every day. <laughs> um, then you've got, uh, you know, then you, then you've got a lot of, a lot of people, a lot of triggers to trip and, uh, and it's going to happen. So, It's just math. It's a problem with the world. It's just too much math. I always wanted to be a muscle-bound barbarian superhero like Conan. That's what I wanted to do for a living. And um, I consider it very unfair that uh, I was basically a 90-pound wimp until one day I was fat. And... Uh, there was never a moment in between where I was a muscle-bound barbarian superhero. Never. But in the 80s, I did make leather armbands with metal studs in them. So that is practically the same thing. And I wore boots. And people associated it with bikerisms or punk rockisms or heavy metalisms not enough people associated it with barbarianisms but that's where i was coming from I did like me some heavy metal back then, but you can't say it anymore because the kids these days have stolen the word heavy metal and applied it to something entirely different. And, you know, when you say, I was into heavy metal, and then they say, oh, what are you into? And then you say some names, and they're like, that's not heavy metal. Well, it was back then. And you just stole the name instead of coming up with something new because you got no freaking originality. 
It was a new expression back then. Uh, harness boots, SCA fave. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, the the uh, yeah the sort of biker boots with a with the loop on the top. Um, yeah, well, they weren't biker boots. They were they're basically a square-toed cowboy boot. I was approached once by an old cowboy up in Prescott. Uh, I had this arm bracer on with with metal studs all over it, and um, they were just a kind of rounded metal studs. And uh, he asked me if I did rodeo, and I said no. And uh, he said, "Oh, well, he's he's he was an old rodeo guy from way back, and uh, they always wore those um, for the same reason bikers started wearing." those not the spiky ones those are not practical but the the studded ones um if you get thrown onto the ground or against a fence or something like that and you land on your arm um the leather brace will save your wrist from cracking and the studs will allow you to skate slide along instead of just hitting and stopping which is what is going to break things uh, so, uh, so whether you're hitting a rail or hitting the pavement, um, you wanted those little metal studs on there. That's what that was about. Or sword fighting. It was good for that, too. Sissy, how many people do you know that broke their middle metacarpal in a sword fight? How many people? Actually, there's a fairly good chance you know several, but you know at least one. Didn't know about the armbands. Well, I didn't know that... Um, uh, then either I uh, yeah I'd never since then I've seen old pictures and realized yeah I'm looking at a guy you know he frequently has gloves as well but uh, yeah he's got gloves and a and a arm cuff and he may have his sleeves down things like that but uh, but it wasn't really a fashion statement for me it was. Uh, I was just looking cool. I was just, you know, I figured if I wore the armbands and the boots, um, sooner or later I would become a muscle bound barbarian superhero. But somehow, mysteriously, that just didn't happen. I probably just didn't eat enough ice cream. God knows I tried. Sissy says, I know a ton of people who broke their fist in a fist fight. Yeah, totally. A bunch. Joking. Oh, you could. You could. You run with a rough crowd. You guys. Um, yeah, I, uh, I, broke, I broke this bone in, inside my hand um, in a sword fight. And I had... 
I'd been using a shield and uh, the rule was you get hit in the arm, you're supposed to take the blow as if you had cut your arm off and so you couldn't hold the shield. So you drop the shield and just keep your arm out of the way and fight one handed because we're too gentlemanly to bleed to death. Um, so you could keep fighting, but you had to fight one handed. So I got hit in the arm and I dropped my shield and I was fighting one handed. And this guy had this magical way of going snap and the the sword would hit you back behind you somewhere. It would, it would hit you in the back. And uh, it was like a scorpion's tail, this guy. It just, you know, and, and you just get hit. So I got hit right on the, 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 the stick came down right on that knuckle. And, and this guy could hit, I mean, really, really knock. He could ring your bell. And uh, he hit me right there. And, and uh, so I walked off the field and I was like, man, that hurts. And I, and I pulled my glove off and looked and I had this knuckle right here in the, in the middle of my the back of my hand so they had to take me to the hospital and all the king's horses and all the king's men they couldn't splint it of course because it's on the inside so uh the doctor took that finger and he pushed it down and he took a pair of pliers for real and this stainless steel wire about that long and he just jammed it in to the end of my knuckle and and slid it down and he, he lined up the the hollow of the bone that way so i had this peg uh inside my hand and my 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 hand was just like that for i don't remember how long a long time a couple, few weeks um about as long as you'd have you know if you had a cast and uh so i walked around like that <laughs> and had my hand all wrapped up and uh but you could see the little the little end of the wire he, he bent it and then clipped it off and so the little end of the wire was just sticking out the end of my knuckle right there. And uh, I was, couldn't work like that. So I was bored one day, never was into basketball, never really cared, but there was a basketball hoop and a basketball where I was. And so I, uh, what that sounds horrible. <laughs> uh, it it wasn't the most fun I've ever had. Um, it, but uh, I was I was playing with this basketball and trying to shoot, shoot hoops and and uh, I threw the basketball and it hit the rim and bounced straight back at my face. And reflexively, I put my hands up <laughs> and, and the basketball hit me right on the peg. <laughs> And uh, that hurt just about as much as the original, uh, as the original moment. Uh, <laughs> the peg it was tight up until then, and, <laughs> and after that, it was loose. I could move it around. Uh, yeah, it was it was kind of gross. Um, so yeah, there they are, and I I like it, and. Uh, I suppose her other arm. Her other arm is coming over here somewhere like this. I'm going to draw it very lightly. Draw it like this. She could be doing that. Maybe I just don't need to in indicate it at all, but kind of feel like, kind of feel like, where's her other arm? You just make a shadow of it. It's over there. I don't really like what that does to her boob. I don't know.
I think I'll leave it alone. Leave it alone for now. So yeah, that's it. That's my horrifying sword fighting story. Um, and that, uh, yeah, that that's not nearly as horrifying as the not one but two times that I busted the crap out of my face. Um, I would I would do the hand again ten times uh, before I would do that again um but that we'll have to wait for another day and uh okay yeah it uh is wednesday i'll see you tomorrow but i will not see you on friday because we're going to the eye doctor stellar's going to get a checkup and i might have a pair of glasses then and i'll have a whole new look a whole new look um Depends on if she's hanging on to him or just standing with him. If she's just standing with him, her arm could be by her side. It's just the fact that her shoulder is, you know, like doing this kind of. It, it, the picture I was using for a reference, the girl was definitely, you know, kind of hanging on the other girl, but she, she was more. They were more the same size, and so um, and really just kind of leaning over on her. So I didn't really draw it. I just kind of sort of drew it. Um, but anyway, yeah, yeah. She could be doing anything. So I will see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.